All right, this video is on Pierre Warsbluff or Pierre Byron, whatever the hell he goes by. This is a little red-headed dude. Used to hang out on Pearl Street. His game was chasing pussy. That's what he's after. You say, oh, that's fine. All boys his age are. Well, actually, he's a grown-ass man. And me, that's not what I was chasing when I was his age. When I was his age, I was chasing a driver's license. I was chasing an honest chance. Pierre is trash. Trash that doesn't keep his word. These people want to be pissed off at me because I scream. Telling me, Sean, you should do this, you should do that. With all due respect, Pierre, you little bitch boy. Do you get assaulted when you go to see your friends and family? Do you? Do the police try to break your fucking wrist, you fucking cunt rag? The reason that I go public with everything is because I am not afraid of my words. I need to be able to sit down somewhere and write it all down, which ain't exactly an easy thing to do. Well, I'm having a severe panic attack. I'm having a panic attack because I'm stuck without the resources that I need in order to do the things that I need to do. Well, people who didn't bother to take a look at all the evidence make excuses like I wanted it, needed it, chose it, or deserved it. I heard that shit when I was a kid, too. I'm going to tell you something. I was in the system as a kid. Was I in the system for anything that I did wrong? Fuck no. I didn't put cocaine up my mom's nose. I didn't make my dad sell cocaine. I was four years old when that son of a bitch went to prison for that shit. He served five years of a mandatory 12-year sentence in Wyoming. Ah. The difference between my dad and I is that I fess up to my shit. At the same time, I was forced to do some pretty unorthodox shit to try to force the police to do their fucking jobs. Before Natalie was killed, the police kept blowing me off. Now, anybody who's looked at the messages between Natalie and I, before she died, we were friends. We became not friends over that goddamn telephone. However, I was in the vehicle with Natalie and Alicia. Matter of fact, all three times that they took me out, their suggestion, not mine, they wanted me to move to Virginia. I was not okay with that. That's where I put my foot down. I was like, no, I'm not going to move to Virginia. I'm going to go back to Colorado and I'm going to see Maddie as well. See, they were also trying to get Miss Shelley to move to Virginia because Ted is evil. However, I should be allowed to face my accusers and I was prevented from doing so. I was prevented from showing evidence. There's this thing called color of law. The officers did what they did because they thought they would get away with it because nobody was in my corner. And they were right. They were absolutely right. Until inmates had such an issue with it. Inmates had such an issue with the way that I was treated that they actually started filling out police reports. Now I'm going to make a, another video after this one about a guy named David Lane.
and there's a very specific reason that I'm going to be making a video about him. But for the time being, we're still talking about Pierre. The first time that me, Natalie, and Alicia went out, it was me, Natalie, Alicia, and two drunk guys went to Virginia Beach. And yes, we talked about Pier on the ride. Alicia did not have nice things to say about Pier. Then, the day that we had that telephone conversation with uh, Shelly Campbell, that was in Virginia as well. These people should have come forward and told the truth. Shelly, either she knew that this Kara Johnson lady was doing what she was doing and uh, Shelly was involved, or Shelly is clueless and this Kara Johnson lady deserves prison time. I don't actually care which. I needed help. I needed these people to come forward and tell the fucking truth. Instead, they played fucking head games. Shelly, you protected the man who tried to beat you to death, you stupid cunt. But that's not about Pierre now, is it? Well, it all ties in together. See, here's the thing. On the ride home that night, we talked about Pierre. Because Pierre was always trying to get at Alicia's pussy. And she complained about this. That wasn't the only time she complained about it. Every time we went somewhere, it was Alicia's turn to talk the whole time. Natalie and I didn't get a word in edgeways, hardly ever. Always Alicia's turn to talk. Always. I should have been allowed to face my accusers. And they should have taken me to court with the things that I was accused of. Matty Boa, if you're going to go running your fucking yap saying that I fucking raped people, then you fucking get those people to come forward. Alicia, you fucking cunt. If I raped you, then you need to fucking press charges against me for rape. If I molested you when you were a kid, you need to press charges against me for child molestation. Otherwise, your bitch ass needs to come forward and be honest. You know what your dad did to your sister, you fucking cunt. And Pier, you're a piece of shit. If I see you, you got two choices. You can either go the other way and pretend I don't exist. Or I will scream at the top of my lungs until you do go away and pretend I don't exist. 